So here are five attitudes that I believe that we need to cultivate. The first of these is, I am a human being expressing God without reservation. This is an attitude that says, who I am is particular, is individual, but I am expressing God. And therefore, I am honorable, I am worthy, I count, and I shouldn't be thinking of myself as something that is less than valuable. That's the first. The second is, I accept myself without complaint. I have a slogan that I use in my own life. It says, whenever I hear my children complaining or, or other people and they ask me for advice, I always say, don't complain, don't explain. Don't complain, don't explain. I accept myself without complaint. I look at the body that I'm in, and I understand that this is nothing more than my curriculum to God. There are things about it that if I were to be designing it myself, perhaps I would have done a little differently. I might have put a little extra hair on the top. <laughs> I might have made myself a little taller. I might have, might have made myself a little darker. I might have made my eyes a different color. Whatever it is. But that isn't up to me. Because who I am is not this thing that I occupy. This is just a garage where I park my soul. And it doesn't matter. It is my curriculum to God. And whether it can see or can't see, whether it's in a wheelchair, whether it's four foot one or seven foot three, whether it's dark or white, whether it's living on the plains of the Kalahari, or whether it's living in uh, New Guinea or in Detroit or Chicago, it doesn't make any difference. I accept myself without complaint. This is what I showed up in. And not only do I accept myself without complaint, but I accept life without complaining. And all of us have that choice, and we don't listen to that inner voice. That inner voice. I've often said that uh, if prayer is you talking to God, then your intuition is God talking to you. And that intuition is something you want to listen to. And complaining about anything in your world, particularly about yourself, is a way of blocking the free flow of the divine intelligence that is everywhere and wants to be delivering abundance into your life. The third is, and this is a hard one for people, is I take full responsibility for my life. I take full responsibility for my life. You see, if you are disconnected or feel disconnected from the divine source, you cannot manifest. The separation is what keeps you from connecting. You can't align yourself. Not taking responsibility for your life and anything in it. And I get letters from people who feel that, that I shouldn't be saying this because people who have illnesses that they can't do anything about, they don't want to have to take responsibility for them. Or people who uh, have been victims of uh, abuse and things like this don't want to take responsibility for them. Taking responsibility doesn't mean that you feel guilty about anything that has come your way. It means that I have attracted this into my life in some way that I don't understand. It has showed up in my life. And it's my life. And I want to be able to ensure that these things don't show up anymore. And also, I want to be able to send them out of my life. But I can't do it if I don't assume a kind of responsibility for them. No guilt. And the fourth one is, I take on no guilt. And to feel worthy, you don't take on guilt. Just taking on this sense of responsibility. If I get anything in my body, that if it's a hernia, if it's a, an ache, if it's a pain, if it were a cancer, if it were arthritis, if it's I can't sleep, if it's a cold, if it's a backache, if it's a headache, whatever it is, I am going to say, there's something in me that has attracted this. Rather than, I don't know how this happened, I'm just a victim. These kind of things happen. We live in a carcinogenic world and these kind of things just happen. It's like the minute that you take responsibility for it, you connect to the divine source which can heal it. The minute that you say, I had nothing to do with this, 
then you put that barrier up there and you're disconnected from the healing of it. So I'm not talking, I want to re-emphasize, I'm not talking about feeling guilty about it. I'm talking about saying, it's here, I've experienced it, I can do something with it, I can either go back to that stage of being an athlete and being a, a, a warrior and say, uh, it's all in my ego, or I can do something profound about it, which is to say I can teach and become a, a, a statesman and a spiritual being by teaching others how to avoid having this happen. It came to me for a reason. I don't have to understand it, but I take responsibility for it. No guilt, no abdicating the person who was responsible for it and saying, oh, it wasn't their fault. None of that. No removal of the punishment that the person deserved for that kind of conduct. None of that. Simply taking responsibility and saying, I now connect to whatever it is that's in my life, and I no longer am going to carry around the anguish and the guilt there, any place in my life. As soon as you do that, you honor your worthiness to receive the healing, to receive the abundance, to receive the love that might have been missing from your life. The fifth and final affirmation or attitude to create for ourselves a sense of being worthy is to have congruency in your life. Congruency. I understand the importance of harmony between my thoughts, my feelings, and my behaviors. Very often, most of the problems that we face as people come from our inability to have congruency or harmony exist between what I think what I feel, and how I behave. I may think one thing, I may feel something else, and then behave in a different way. And to have a congruency is to honor your worthiness. Virtually all addictions come from an incongruency. I have a thought about one thing, I feel something else, and then I behave in a different way. And that incongruency is what keeps us from feeling worthy.